I'm going to jump a 66 inch hurdle. At least that's the goal. I don't know if I'm going to actually do it. I don't know how it's going to end up, but I'm training to jump a 66 inch hurdle. So I know a lot of you guys are going to say, but Paul, why 66 inches? That's such a random number, such a random goal. So the story behind the 66 inch hurdle, I'm an intern. This is back in college. I'm an intern at a sports performance facility. I had just started my business. So I'm running this business on the side. It's not very successful. I wasn't training athletes yet. I was training everyday people. I was working on myself. This is right before that magical year where I made my transformation. And in my off time, I'm interning at this sports performance facility. Well, one of the athletes at the facility is a guy named Adrian Wilson. So if you watch football, you probably know him. He was playing for the Cardinals at the time. Just a freak athlete, jacked, fast twitch fibers through the roof. He jumped a 66 inch hurdle from an approach and it went viral. It was on ESPN. It was everywhere. And every day I would go into the facility and I would just look at him and be like, I wish I had those genetics. I wish I had those fast switch fibers. And it was kind of this weird time in my life where I was kind of like blaming my genetics. Now, fast forward a little bit, I started making my transformation. So this is when I originally came up with my whole methodology in my system. And this is the year where I put 12 inches on my vertical jump and went from barely touching the rim to doing full windmill dunks. I finish up my internship. I start training athletes. I start using my methodology on athletes around Arizona and it really starts to blow up. My athleticism is still transforming and I basically achieved every athletic goal that I ever had and actually beyond even what I could have imagined doing with my own athleticism. But there was one thing that I never tried when I was in my prime and that was a 66 inch hurdle jump. It wasn't till a couple months ago where I really sat back and realized I achieved just about everything, but I never tried the 66 inch hurdle jump. And that was always this weird little goal that I had in the back of my mind. And so I'm like, you know what? I just finished my fat don't fly program. I'm back close to my optimal jumping weight and it's now or never. If I'm ever gonna get this 66 inch hurdle jump, it's gotta be now. I'm lean, I'm in shape. I'm only getting older, so I have to do it now. And so I announced on TikTok two weeks ago that I'm gonna do this jump. And so I wanna do it in 30 days. Now I only have 15 days left. So I'm two weeks in right now. I'm in pretty good shape. I'm doing phase four of the vert code uh, because that's more of our spring phase. I'm trying to get my tendons, my fascia nice and springy. Um, I'm doing some strength maintenance work and I feel really good, I think. I might be able to get it. Now, I've never done above a 63 inch hurdle. So realistically in this 30 days, I need to improve two, three, maybe four inches on the vert. I think it's possible. I also need to lose another five pounds, which is gonna be really tough to do in the next two weeks. Um, but I need to be down around probably 182, 183 if I'm gonna get over this 66 inch hurdle. So right now, I'm gonna take you into a little bit of my phase four vert code workout. Let's get to it. Sometimes we're trying to be the lion. Sometimes we're trying to be powerful, use our muscles. Sometimes we're trying to be the gazelle. We're trying to be reactive off the ground and use those tendons. That's that effortless athleticism that we need in the fourth quarter. So right now I'm working on that gazelle athleticism.
All right, guys, so this is where I'm veering away from anything in Fat Don't Fly and anything in Bird Code Phase 4. Anytime I'm trying to really jump high, I remove all high volume strength training, so I don't do anything above five or six reps. Uh, right now, I'm only doing three reps. I also remove all full range of motion exercises. That stuff's great for injury reduction and for other reasons, but for approach jumping, we need joint angle specificity. So that's where we do things like quarter squats. So a lot of times when I'm trying to jump my highest, I do my plyometrics, I do my approach jump practice. And then for strength work, I only do one or two exercises and I do quarter squats. Now recently I realized that a single leg rear foot elevated quarter squat is one of the highest peak forces that we can possibly hit. And the beautiful thing is it's less stress on your back because that's the problem with quarter squats is you get so heavy, we're in this good biomechanical position. So our lower body can produce a lot of force, but at some point the lower back becomes a limiting factor. You switch that to one leg, now it's safe on the spine. And now we're hitting really high peak forces in the angles that actually matter for the vertical jump. I'm gonna hook it up to a force plate test. Let me see what I can get. This is a 255 right here. Two thousand three hundred and sixty newtons of force. That's a lot of force. Now the beautiful thing is that's per leg, right? So now I go in, I do my left leg. I'm going to get a similar, close to twenty five hundred newtons of force. In an approach jump, I might hit seventeen to two thousand newtons of force. So when we look at increasing force potential with heavy weights, to me the peak force has to be higher in the strength exercise than it is in the jumping exercise. This is one of the very few exercises that you're gonna see a higher peak force. Bilateral back squat, you will not see higher peak force per leg than you see in an approach jump. Deadlift, you will not see peak forces higher than an approach jump. This exercise, you will. Whew. Three reps got me out of breath. Going up, we are now at, I'm not a math guy, 305, single leg quarters. I really wanna see if I can hit over 2,500 newtons of force. If I can hit over 2,500 newtons of force, I'll be satisfied, we'll stay here. I'll probably crank out two to three more sets. <clears throat> Please tell me that was 2,500. Oh my goodness, 2,800 newtons of force. That might be my record. Mm, no. That was a misreading on the last one when I put my second foot down, but I still got like 24.5. That's the 2,500 mark. On my last rep, my peak concentric force was just under 2,500 newtons of force. Either way, it's higher peak forces than I'm gonna see in the approach jump. So when we look at increasing that force potential, that's where it's at, and then we're training these joint angles that matter, right? We did this whole squat series that you should check out on EdgeU or for a, a Cliff Notes version, check out the YouTube. But one thing we talk about is all the studies that show these deep ranges, building strength here does not translate to these more minimal knee angles. It does in beginners, but as soon as you're a trained athlete, everything is now joint angle specific. So if I wanna get really strong at this angle, I gotta train at this angle, right? I gotta put on the brakes at this angle, I gotta transition out at this angle. I can't just do everything down here and then concentrically get through those angles. We massively under train the joint angles that actually matter. I'm low key, kind of excited that I might've just hit my personal best in peak force per leg. Part of me wants to go up. I'm probably gonna live to fight another day because I gotta come back in two days and do these and I gotta have my nervous system in a decent spot. I'll go at five pounds. All right, I'm not a math guy, but this is 315. Keep in mind, if you guys are watching this, if you're untrained, you don't need to be messing with weights like this. Train with a weight that is safe for you, gradually progress. This is a marathon, it's not a sprint. I've been training for 20 something years. And so doing stuff like this is like second nature for me. So don't freak out and all of a sudden go try to become a power lifter. This is a very, very small part of my overall programs. Low key wanna hit an all time record above 2,500. If I don't hit it, I'm gonna be a very, very angry man. Nope. 
not gonna happen. It's just not gonna happen. I got right here and I said, no, this is not, it's not gonna happen. That's a huge part of training is being able to know your limitations. And like I said, you gotta live to fight another day. So because I put on the brakes a little bit and I didn't try to crush through that rep, well, one, I stay healthy, but two, I still have my nervous system left for when I come back on Wednesday and I gotta hit this workout again. So after a workout like this, especially when I'm trying to peak and I'm trying to get really bouncy, I should leave the gym feeling more bouncy than when I came in, right? A lot of you guys, you do your strength training, it's like you limp out the gym. That's okay if you're a bodybuilder or if we're in a phase where we are trying to put on some size for whatever reason, maybe you're trying to be more physical on the court, we gotta put on some size, yeah, you gotta push through some stuff. And so that's a part of it. Uh, but most of your vertical jump training, you wanna leave the gym feeling fresher and more bouncy than when you came in. So right now I'm just gonna do one more assistance exercise. I'll do an RDL to balance out the hamstrings and the quads. I had a goal of hitting a couple more assistance exercises, but uh, honestly, I wanna leave the gym feeling fresh. Um, so I'm gonna cut myself short. That's an important thing that you gotta be able to do. That's a skill that you have to have. You gotta be honest with yourself and don't just say because it's on a piece of paper, I gotta plow through the program exactly as it is. You gotta be willing to take a step back and say, hey, I'm gonna leave the gym feeling fresh. I'm gonna be back in two days and I'm gonna crush it then. probably a 63, 64 inch hurdle. I low key kind of don't want to try the 66 because if I don't get it, it's gonna be in the back of my mind for the next two weeks. I don't think I'm gonna try it until the day of. I think I'm just gonna go out there delusional, hyped up and just go get the 66 for the first time and last time. But one piece of advice I give to anybody is whatever the goal is, you gotta practice the goal. Um, like if one of my clients came to me and said, hey man, my goal is to jump a 66 inch hurdle, I would say, well, you're an idiot. That's a dumb goal, let's choose a new goal. But uh, for me, I can't tell myself that. So I'm, I'm going through with it. I'm gonna get this 66 inches. So for me, I should be practicing the skill itself. And so next week, I'm gonna start to incorporate that in a little bit. If I can hit a 63, maybe a 64, then I'm just gonna come out hyped up, delusional, and I'm gonna get the 66 inch hurdle. So until next time, I'm out. Thank you.